hot garbage. Nobody wanted to buy this CPU, did they? So you may have seen many videos that the i9 11900K or the 11900KF is hot garbage. And I mean that literally. Even scrolling through YouTube, you can see all of these videos are all negative with some choice emojis used to help describe how terrible this CPU really is. And to be honest, I don't disagree with them. Gamers Nexus has done a fantastic review of this CPU, which clearly shows that this CPU is much better at gaming than it is at multitasking activities such as rendering. As a conclusion, Gamer Nexus resorted to benchmarking the CPU against GTA 5, which it performed well. Even if we look at the core count for the i9 10900K is much higher than the i9 11900K which comes in at a measly 8 cores. Considering this is a flagship CPU and only having 8 cores is inadequate if you compare it to Ryzen. Hardware unboxed wasn't much better showing that it was somewhat 9-6% to slower compared to either the 10900K and quite a bit slower than the Ryzen 9 5900X when running games at 1080p ultra quality settings. A rule however, in most of these reviews there wasn't much difference between the Ryzen 9 5900X but for productivity tasks it was quite a bit slower now you may be asking, am I nuts enough to purchase this CPU in 2024 if it is so bad? You'll be pleased to know that I am. One of the reasons and the only reason for purchasing this CPU was the price. At launch, this CPU originally cost an eye-watering, get this, $574, whereas today, if you hunt around a little, it can be picked up for as little as $140 or if you get really lucky, $120. Even Socket LGA 1200 motherboards are going for quite cheap these days for an entry level motherboard costing you only around $40. Now if we look at the specs of the i9-11100KF, which is a version of the i9 I happen to have picked up, has 8 cores, 16 threads, and on a fairly dated 14 nanometer process, clock speeds with velocity boost, whatever that is, can boost up to 5.3 gigahertz with a base frequency of 3.5 gigahertz and a TDP of 125 watts. So this boy is thirsty for power and also gets extremely hot, so you do need a very good CPU cooler. Now standard feature for this CPU is that it supports PCIe Gen 4 which is a big difference from PCIe Gen 3 and you can see that in the graph above. For which this means a much higher bandwidth makes available to communicate with the CPU with 20 lanes available. This means you can have 1 times x16 and 1 times 4 covering the 20, 20 lanes. Another consideration for this CPU is the cooler. And you can see how I have an absolute beast of a CPU cooler and I've attached to try and get the best overclock performance from the CPU. I wouldn't recommend an AIO cooler on this application because air coolers tend to have a slightly better cooling performance than they do with AIOs, especially for these hot type types of CPUs. And as you can see here, the thermal paste I used was a cheap thermal paste. It didn't work out well for me, so I ended up wiping it off and I used a uh, metal thermal paste, whatever you call it, thermal grizzly, and uh, that worked much better. Now for hardware, I'm using an Asus Tough B560M motherboard, which granted isn't the best motherboard to do this test with since it limits voltage regulator. However, should still be able to get a reasonable overclock, I don't know, in addition, I'm using 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz Corsair Vengeance RAM and an RTX 3080 Ti PNY model. Now let's just jump into some benchmarks. So first off, doing a Cinebench test on 2024 version. And unfortunately, when I completed this test, it only got 689 
points which kind of lands it slightly below an i5 12 400 or 12th gen i5 and even the third gen ryzen 3700x outperforms it at 736 points um and even it's uh it's underscored by the i7 11 700 actually performs better than this cpu so if you can get the 11th gen i7 which actually tends to be more expensive than this i9 um you'll be definitely getting better points for uh this type of rendering activity but yeah it's just it's just shockingly bad for what this cpu is and it's not much better than the 9th gen i9 which isn't really saying much so yeah productivity pretty rubbish in my opinion now looking at the 3d mark scores we can see actually this i9 cpu can definitely keep up with a 3080 ti and the score is not too bad 5009 points you're actually doing quite well on speedway which is quite a demanding test on 3d mark and overall i'm i'm very impressed with that score in terms of gaming and if we compare the final scores at the end of this test you can see actually it's not that far behind a 12th gen i9 which isn't too bad and that's when intel took a huge step up in their cpu performance and it even performs better than a 7th gen ryzen which i really didn't expect so i ran a couple of tests and i got the same result on 3d mark so very impressed with that overall now i just did a test on apex legends firing range and on the left you can see i'd run it at 1080p on the right i'm running at 1440p and overall the results are actually not too bad you're getting 144 fps at 1080p and getting around about 132 at 1440p in terms of a cpu utilization you can see it's still incredibly low even though it's probably under more strain although the cpu was only being strained to about 30 40 percent while i was running at apex i'm not entirely sure why but when i cranked it up to 1440p you can still even see then that you know it may be peaked out around about 50 percent utilization and the frame times was completely flat as anything so i'm really impressed with the performance of this game and you can see the cpu didn't fell throttle thermal throttle it, it stayed around about 4800 megahertz so yeah happy with that so i got cyberpunk running at 1080p on the left and running at 1440p on the right bearing in mind i've got everything cranked up to max i have ray tracing on all the bells and whistles so on the left i've running around about 130 140 fps it kind of fluctuates quite a bit but the temps are fairly reasonable running around about 70 degrees i have a fairly big case that you've seen before and the frame times is steady as anything no stutters no frame locks no nothing and even at 1440p i was getting approximately about 30 40 fps i would say on average and frame times perfectly steady and even the temperatures of the gpu cpu was no trouble at all um so i'm quite pleased with this if you wanted to do anything productivity wise forget about it on this cpu it's pretty awful but if you want this for a dedicated gaming setup something to run your 3080 4090 even you know this is not a bad option if you don't have a, a huge amount of cash to splash now i didn't run pubg at 1080p i kind of got a bit lazy at this point uh, so i just ran it at 1440p and again you can see well into the 90s hundreds running this game no problems at all also i've whacked everything to max pretty much and temps running fine in fact the cpu is barely even being challenged here at around about 30 percent utilization while the gpu is being completely maxed out so overall uh very happy with with that performance uh just as a side note i did try at 1080p and again the r9 had no trouble keeping up in PUBG. and the final game i really wanted to try out was cs2 i couldn't get the um 
Reva Tuna to show up in this, and I read up online, and it's a bit of a hassle to try and get it to work. So I just played it, and I had a bit of fun. And as you can see, it has no issues running this game at all. It was running on the higher settings, and this was a, a bit of a bot game, which uh, I kind of won and lost at the same time. You know, the bots are pretty good, and I'm pretty rubbish. So, yeah, I, I probably died a couple of times. I, I wanted to have a bit of a stabby stabby fun with these guys and yeah got taken down pretty easy but overall definitely playable 100 percent no problems at all so what is my final conclusion well at launch for 500 or whatever dollars that they were charging you for that cpu i would have said definitely not forget about it however at 140 dollars maybe even 120 dollars it's definitely cheaper than the i9, which comes in at around about $200 and $350. And even the Ryzen 9 5900X still comes in around about $350. And is somewhat comparable to a Ryzen 7 5800X. So if you look at that whole range of CPUs, they all come in at around about $250, $350. Whereas this comes in at $140, $120. Bear in mind, you do need an LGA 1200 motherboard and you do need a mammoth cooler to make sure that CPU stays cool at all times and some really good thermal paste. But if you have all of those things, I really do think that the i9-11900KF or the K may be a serious contender if you are looking to set up a gaming PC in 2024. And... Uh, I really think you should uh, give it a try. So if this was helpful to you, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.